Hey everyone, so I'm here with Bill and Kim and we walked around this vehicle and it was a full stop and we had to come over and talk to you guys about your Overland vehicle. Now, you don't, I don't think, you wake up in the morning and that afternoon end up with one of these because you just figured you wanted one. No. Can you tell me a little bit about the backstory? How did you end up with this awesome vehicle? What was the thought? Um, a friend of ours got a Unimog. Yeah. We looked around for more. Um, we realized it was an insane game that we weren't ready for. <laughs> so in doing research, uh, we found uh, Jay uh, couch and uh, we don't get much free time uh, we want more so uh, I called him up and said I only have Sunday off can you meet with me and he said yes we talked for six hours and realized what we were getting into so we bought the truck from him and then went online to try to find something to match right we went to Vienna for a conference we figured we're as close to Breda Netherlands as will be in the next two or three years and uh, we called up Edward and Merlin at Brist, Brist Mobile and they said come on down and picked us up at the train station and spent a day with them at their factory. So it was a lot of research and um, knowing where we lived and how what kind of things we wanted to do with it. That's how we put it together. So we were just outside this Unimog with Kim and Bill talking about the Unimog platform. Now we are inside that vehicle and we're talking to Marlene and Ed who have designed and engineered this interior habitat and we're gonna go through what it takes to build something like this. Can you edit that out? <laughs> <laughs> Before we start talking about this particular build, can you guys tell me a little bit about um, the company, how you started, and what you do? Sure. Okay, yeah, cool. of course. We started in 2012 yep. after uh, being uh, on the road and on the sea for several years. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are passionate travelers ourselves. Uh, we learned a lot uh, of these experiences. Um, we had as well experience with the overland traveling and then expedition truck built and uh, as a, Edward is an engineer he mm -hmm. said it, it it should be better it can be better and it has to be a standardized concept and after we came back um, we were so much inspired by the overland traveling and we had so many ideas what was your impression when you went to the Bliss factory? You said you spent, you know, the better part of a day. What the was your thing? Was it? It was we spent the entire day there, right? And we saw the whole process beginning to end. Um, at that point, they hadn't put an alcove on one of the boxes, so they were building prototypes and testing them out, mm -hmm. and you could just see the whole process and the detail involved. They had the CAD drawings, so we could. Yeah look at that and see what it would look like virtually. Wow. And um, we had all the swaths of material and wood and everything. So it was really a great experience. Plus they knew we had been traveling, so we got a really nice, you know, lunch. And, <laughs> <laughs> they fed us. and other it things. Was nice. it was, yeah, so, and then we saw the entire yeah. um, operation. Yeah, the, the yeah. yachting industry is quite similar to the overland industry. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're on your own and you have to survive and you have to go through the different, let's say, uh, well, uh, time zones or areas or places with different temperatures, different uh, wind conditions, uh, different temperatures, mm -hmm. then you will see that you struggle with the same thing. And it basically all comes down to three major subjects, uh, which is energy. As long as you have or can produce energy, you can help yourself. Uh, the second thing is, of course, insulation. If there are huge temperature differences, then you have to cope with it, and everything has to be still operative. And then the third thing is uh, the structure. Uh, a regular structure would not do very well, uh, even with boats on the ocean. In small lakes, fine, mm -hmm. if you really go and do a transatlantic. The boat may look the same, 
but the requirements are quite different and that applies to off-roading exactly the same. How are you going to use this rig? Uh, you're here at Expo, what are your near-term plans? How are you going to use this vehicle? Well, we live in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of nearby wilderness to us and so we've taken a lot of short trips um, close to home because we still work. Um, but on the way home from Flagstaff, we'll probably tour by the Grand Canyon through Moab back to Santa Fe. Um, we're planning to go to Wyoming in August for the solar eclipse and then to Yellowstone. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. Do you see yourself touring mostly around the southwestern states for now or in the near future? We're probably more time limited in the near future, so mm. yes. Yeah. Um, but eventually we'd like to yeah. travel farther and wider in it. You might have this for a while. I oh, hope yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has a million mile motor, so I think we have some yes. time there. Oh, we really? Fixed that it is, up. Yeah. All right, now you've mentioned this is a perfect segue. Um, now let's start talking about this vehicle. Let's get into some of the components, um, and we may as well start with the power plant. You just said it's got a million mile motor. Tell us about that. Um, well, Jay's really the expert, but it sure. has a, I think it's an OM366A, so it's the standard um, engine. And it's been distributed all over the planet, so components are really easy to get. Mm -hmm. um, it had 130 horsepower, so we increased that to 270 with different injectors and a different boost. Mm -hmm. um, but it still runs really cool. It's a turbo diesel. It's yes, a turbo it diesel, and which I think is key. Yeah. Especially at altitude. Um, these don't behave well at high altitude because you're not having enough oxygen to burn your fuel. So it really makes it much more efficient. Right. Yeah. Um, miles per gallon. About 10. Which that is to me, that is to me incredible. Yeah, it's surprisingly good. Yeah, we are also pleased, <laughs> <laughs> especially with so much power and um, it's cruising. We average 62 miles an hour to get here from Santa Fe. Santa Fe. At an average, that's incredible. Average, yeah. Right. yeah, that is incredible. So, and you know, it's very stable on the road. And um, I mean, Jay is really, beefed up a lot of the components to take into account the box on the back and mm -hmm. the weight. He redid the suspension, redid the torsion bars, um, added the central tire inflation system. Um, which another was, fuel tank. And another fuel tank. For what range. is your total capacity in terms of fuel? 70 gallons. 70 and change, yeah. yeah. That's more than my Land Cruiser. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Just good is not good enough because you have to trust that people that are very remote can help themselves. Yep. That means that every design should be ready to have an alternative without, let's say, being an engineer. Mm -hmm. And every single part you have to approach like this, that as a matter of fact, if people go into the desert for a couple of weeks, they can come out with the story, maybe something did work or broke down, but we didn't care because there was a straight alternative. Mm -hmm. That means from heating to cooling, you always have to look at what you try to achieve. So just having a fridge is not good enough. You need a freezer, which is the backup of the fridge, separate compressors, that if one fails, you can put, use the other one because otherwise you'll lose all your food. Mm -hmm. So just having a fridge is not good enough and having a very small freezer won't bring you anywhere. Wow. Yeah. So you need the pickups, you need separate systems that are complementary to each other and you can switch from one point to the, to the other. Wow, so redundancy is yes. built into yes. your, we your call it habitats. I mean, that's the, I mean really I'm, yes. I'm referring to it as a habitat yes. and you have built-in yes. redundancy. Well, what we call it not a single point of failure. Yeah, wow. You mentioned uh, some of the suspension upgrades, uh, and when I was walking around the rig, I noticed the size of the torsion bars. Yes. What did What did you guys do for the suspension to upgrade the Unimog platform? Well, when we first put the box on, it squatted a little bit. So if you look underneath there, there are these two helical springs, and that was changed out from what was part of the army spec mm -hmm. as I don't know what they were carrying but it was probably not this heavy mm -hmm. um, so that that leveled the box and leveled the um, truck as well 
and then he put a huge torsion bar in the back because when we were first driving it, it was rocking, and so now it doesn't do that. It's very stable in the wind. And then he added the hydraulic system, so we have the winches and, mm -hmm. and things like that, you know, that are added on. Okay, so hydraulic system for the winch. You're not running a worn electric winch. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about this winch. What is it? Um, it it's uh, I think it's sixteen thousand pounds, pounds with a with a um, pretty beefy cord that's you know over twenty thousand, um, and it has low and high gears. It, it has a hand controller here, and you can also control it in the cab. So when he did all the upgrades. It's all the Mercedes buttons for everything, so it, it looks stock, which is actually a really, I think, a, a really incredible part of Jay's work. I can't say enough good mm -hmm. things about that human. Um, great. Yeah, so, I mean, attention to detail and everything, really great communication about what needs to be done, and just super, you know, transparent and honest about the costs and, and things, which is just nice in this day and age. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of stuff that's overpriced or oversold for what it is. He also designed the entire bull bar um, and the cage as well. So you can, it has its little insignia and everything. And I mean, even when he put in the overdrive for it, it has a switch that always breaks and he redesigned the switch. So mm -hmm. it's a, you know, a piece of bullet aluminum that they've, uh, you know, machined. So, I mean, it's just little things like that that make a huge yeah. difference for longevity. Um, Bill, you mentioned the central inflation system. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What is that? What is that for? Um, well, it's, it supplies a, a bunch of different uh, abilities for the truck. Mm -hmm. One is to reduce the wear on the tires. So, um, or if you're on washboard or something like that, you can deflate the tires and they're a lot more absorptive of the energy. Mm -hmm. So you're not rattling your teeth or your kidneys out. Right. Um, but on the highway and other things, you can adjust the pressure so that you're not wearing the high side of the tire. It's not overinflated. So you're wearing these down. I mean, these, these are huge tires um, and they, they're tractor tires basically. So they're good for sand and mud and you know, water environments, um, bad on ice, but everything is. Yes. But, uh, but it allows you to adjust that to get out of a, a situation. Um, otherwise, you'd have to go around and lower the tires and then pump them back up. There is an air system in these trucks. Um, there are air brakes and other things, but um, the pump is kind of underpowered and the capacitance is underpowered. So Jay put in four compressors so that the tires can ramp up quickly and drop and you can do different axles. Um, you know, he has a toggle switch so I can do the wow. back or front independently so it's not all at once. Um, there's a pressure gauge you put in that's really um, trick. And so you do all that from inside on the, the Inside the cab, yeah, so you don't have to get great. out to, to do yeah. that. And you can be in there winching and doing other things as well. So that's actually a really super feature. Well, and the, the three most important things in our definition for overlanders or the travelers is you need a very good bed. So you need a very good mattress. You need a wet toilet, meaning a real toilet. <laughs> and you need, you need a very good hot shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you have these three things, uh, and that starts up for every morning, uh, the fourth thing, uh, the fourth thing is a good coffee machine, and then you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and we finish with a good glass of wine, which are here stored. There you go. But if you uh, concentrate on uh, these three main things, uh, which we really spend a lot of time on. Uh, then normally you will find happy overlanders. It's a pleasure to drive. Really? I mean, it, I mean, it has the military seats in it, and yeah. we drove, you know, 12 hours, and it's really not uncomfortable. Like, cool. it's very ergonomic, even though it looks utilitarian. You get a lot so, of honking and people waving. Yeah, yeah and people, <laughs> like, also, people just swerving and trying to take pictures at the same it's time. It's really easy to drive, and it's right. really maneuverable. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, we literally have parked it in a parking spot at the grocery store, wow. which draws a lot of attention, but um, yeah. it's just easy. Yeah. 
Kim drives it all over the place, backs it in. We have a greenhouse in my mom's casita. We, she can back uh -huh. it right in there and it just, it fits between the two. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it has a better turning radius than a G-Wagon. Wow. Yes. Because we went wow. down the Lava Hata Trail mm -hmm. between Santa Fe and Albuquerque. It's the old road and it's it has a lot of switchbacks and they had to do three point turns and we just made the turns. We never had to do the backup. Wow, that's thing. amazing. Yeah. I know. So it's incredibly maneuverable. Yeah. There's you know, millions if not billions of dollars of research and development to make this what it is. Yeah. yeah. Make it They're dedicated yeah. to universal yeah. machine, yeah. yeah. So you guys, thanks for sharing your story. We're going to start looking at the interior All right. of this Very rig. Good. Enjoy. Yes. And really appreciate your Thank time. You. Thank Absolutely. you. All right. Maybe All right. we'll see you on the trail one day. You can tell me out that. if I get stuck. All right. Yeah. Correct. Right. <laughs> we got that covered. It wouldn't feel okay. right. <laughs> No. All right. See you later. Yeah, Thank thanks you. a lot. All right. Take care. Bye.